Well, let's follow up now on the party promises and the choices for voters on the climate change issue. Sean Fraser is the Liberal candidate for re-election in the Nova Scotia riding of Central Nova. He was the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of the Environment in the last Parliament. Ed Fast is the Conservative candidate for re-election in the B.C. riding of Abbotsford. He was the Conservative Environment critic in the last Parliament. Emily Tammen is the NDP candidate in Ottawa Centre, and Jean-Luc Cook is the Green Party candidate in the Ottawa area riding of Nepean. Thank you all for being here to talk about this important subject. And Mr. Frazier, let me start with you. Uh, your leader announced this pledge today to cut corporate taxes for zero emissions tech companies. But beyond that, we have almost no detail for how you'll take this country to net zero emissions by 2050. No details on penalties for companies that don't meet benchmarks. No details on how the target will affect oil producing provinces and their workers. No details on how much carbon taxes might have to rise to get there. Shouldn't voters know these questions during the answers to these questions during an election campaign? Uh, look, I think the important uh, place to start is that uh, we know climate change is real and requires urgent action. Uh, I was absolutely thrilled uh, when I saw the announcement today that we're going to be moving to a net zero carbon emissions by 2050. Uh, this is the gold standard in the modern conversation about what it takes to fight climate change. And it's going to help position Canada, if the Liberal government is re-elected, as a leading voice in the world in the fight against climate change. It's no longer about lip service. It's about actually setting an ambition uh, that we, we can achieve and must achieve. Uh, to your point, uh, the first plank and how we're going to get there was rolled out today with uh, tax cuts for businesses that are actually promoting green technology. And this builds upon a number of the measures that we've already had in place, whether it's the price on pollution, investments in energy efficiency, investments in electric vehicles, investments in green infrastructure and public transit, and the list goes on. Uh, there'll be more to come over the course of the campaign, and it's going to take work to get there. Uh, but we know that this is, this is a challenge we simply cannot fail to achieve uh, because our future depends on it just for ourselves, not just for ourselves, uh, but for our kids and grandkids as well. Ed Fast, why do you think this proposal is bad for Canada? Well, Peter, just, just listen to Sean. He's saying that his prime minister is now agreeing to a, two, a 2050 target when, in fact, the prime minister isn't even meeting our current 2030 Paris targets. Every year since 2016, we've been falling behind, further and further behind in meeting our Paris targets. Now we have a prime minister who has difficulty keeping any promise, making a promise that doesn't have to be fulfilled until 2050. Think about it. He won't be in office then. He doesn't have to deliver on this, right, but, but he can't even deliver on a 2030 target. But, but there, this is bogus. Their, their, their point is obviously, you heard Sean Fraser, they got to start somewhere. So uh, how, how close would the Conservative plan get us to net zero emissions by 2050? Or, or do you believe net zero should even be a goal at this point? We say that our goal should be to meet our Paris targets. And we have said that our Conservative plan, a real plan for the environment, gives Canada the best chance to meet those Paris targets. All right, Emily Cook. Uh, or sorry, I'm sorry, <laughs> Emily Tammen. What do, you, what, do you think of, what do you think of this proposal today? Uh, the NDP's got a climate plan too. Uh, what's your reaction to what you heard from the Liberals? Yeah, I mean, I think your question to Mr. Fraser was exactly the right one. I think um, Canadians are getting tired of hearing all the right words and uh, no action and no details to back up those words. We know that we're on a limited time frame to get this right. The Liberals have had a chance and they have failed to deliver. They, they say that we need to act, you know, with all urgency, and then they're expanding our fossil fuel infrastructure at a time that we really need to be transitioning off fossil fuels. Where are you on the, on, on the net zero goal by 2050? Is, do you agree with the goal? Absolutely. Even if, in the target, even if we haven't seen the, the nuts and bolts of it? Of course. I mean, we like a lot of what we're hearing. I think the question is this major credibility gap that the Liberals have, and, and I don't think Canadians um, are going to believe that they're going to follow through, as Mr. Fass said. I mean, they're not even on target to meet the weak targets that they set for themselves in Paris. And uh, Canadians deserve better, our children deserve better. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, I, I really think that people are very skeptical about the credibility of a plan that comes with no details and only words. Right. Mr. Cook, the, the Greens have, uh, have also a promise of net zero emissions by 2050. So what's your reaction to what you heard from the Liberals today? Well, um, Justin Trudeau gave his plan with no steps and no procedures. Uh, Elizabeth May can quote her plan to the fifth decimal place. Uh, you can usually tell when a politician doesn't mean serious business when they don't put uh, steps and procedures and goals and objectives uh, in mind. Uh, we need to do to carbon the same thing we did to leaded gasoline. We just have to say, after this time, it's over. It's done. And um, yes, a price on carbon is part of that, but of course there has to be more infrastructure development. Um, there must also be uh, incentives for uh, transitioning to electrical vehicles now. Um, 
the liberals are literally greenwashing themselves. All their party platform websites have gone green in an attempt to appeal to people that they are the Green Party and they are not. All right, let, me, let, me, let me go back to Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser, I think it, it takes us back here about, you know, whether in this kind of, I think you would agree that to reach that goal, there's going to have to be some transformative change in society. Should, should Canadians be told now during an election campaign what's expected of them, what this transformation will look like? Uh, absolutely. I think Canadians rightly deserve to understand uh, what policies are going to be put in place. But you have to appreciate that this is going to be transformative change across the Canadian economy. It's not going to happen overnight, but it's going to start today. Uh, we've got to start by making investments like cutting taxes for businesses that are actually going to be making these kinds of investments. Uh, but make no mistake, this is going to require massive investments in uh, infrastructure that helps reduce our emissions, whether it's public transit or improving energy efficiency of buildings. It's going to require that we support workers by investing in a just transition for those who might be in the fossil fuel sector that have skills that are transferable to the new and green economy. There's a massive economic opportunity. Some of the steps are going to be laid out over the remainder of this campaign, and some of them are going to continue to develop as we invest in innovation for the, in, in right. the, uh, the near future. You're, you're, you're... Uh, the fact is, if we don't have an ambitious goal. We know we're not going to get there. I couldn't be more thrilled with the announcement today because it demonstrates to me okay. a willingness to increase our ambition and do what needs to be done to do justice for our planet and for generations to come. What's going to happen to the, the carbon tax? I think people watching want to know, okay, what is it going to mean for, for my family, for my business? What am I going to pay in a carbon tax after 2022? Your, your previous government had said it's going to be $50 a ton in 2022. And I look at this target you set today and I'm pretty sure you're going to have to jack carbon taxes a lot higher than they are now, aren't you? Uh, there's a number of different policies that can help us get to where we need to be. Putting a price on pollution is frankly one of the most effective things we can do. Uh, we know that the last year's uh, Nobel Prize winner for economics won for crafting a uh, plan much like the one that we've implemented. It's con been confirmed to be effective by different courts in different Canadian provinces and by virtually everyone who has any equity in the conversation around climate economics. Uh, the fact is there's a number of different measures we have to put forward. When it comes to our price on pollution, the commitment we've made was to implement it accelerating to $50 per ton by 2022 and to conduct a review at that time. That commitment has not changed. We're going to demonstrate based on science, facts and evidence whether it's working and how well it's working in 2022 and then make a decision on where to go from there. There's not been a decision to change it uh, from the plan as, as uh, it was initially announced. We're going to conduct the review so we understand the impact of this important policy and the role that it's going to play and help us get to carbon neutrality. Let me, move to, let me move dead fast. Mr. Fast, go ahead. And what, what do you think we should expect in terms of effects of how the Liberals can get us to this zero, uh, net zero goal by 2050? What, what do you think it means in terms of this transformative change we're talking about? A massive increase in carbon taxes, and the reason I can say that is I have proof in my hands right now. This is a document from the federal government, the Liberal government, going back to November of 2015. It says external modeling starting in 2015, meeting Canadian targets would require a carbon price rising to $100 by 2020 and $200 to $300 per tonne by 2050. That is the plan. That is the carbon tax, climate change plan that the Liberal government is planning behind closed doors. The document is marked secret, by the way. You can see it. And that is the Liberal plan, taxing Canadians to death. We have a better plan. It's one that shifts the focus from taxation to technology, incentivizing and accelerating the development of technology that is going to help address global greenhouse gas emissions. Okay, let me come back to the studio and, and both of my guests here. It, it, I, I guess what people want to know is, is, are we having the right conversation in an election campaign around expectations? And targets and goals are fine, but I, how does a voter make a decision here unless they know what's expected of them? I think, you know, one thing that I'm hearing from a lot of people that they find very frustrating is this, um, you know, liberal and conservative attempt to frame this entire debate about carbon tax versus no carbon tax. And, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, a carbon tax is a very small part of a credible plan to, to get us to meet a reasonable emissions target that keeps us below 1.5 degrees of warming. But when, when Ed Fast talks about $300 and so on in carbon taxes, whether, is that alarmist or is that a number? And he's quoting a liberal document. Well, says, it's a number. <laughs> is, it, but, it, but is it... A fair number? Should we be t having a conversation with people th these days that says, you know what, 
it's going to be a lot higher, higher, but that's the price we're going to have to pay. Are we having that conversation? Well, I mean, I, I'm not sure that I would accept that premise. I think, you know, we can invoke strong regulatory measures. We can, like I said, stop expanding our fossil fuel um, infrastructure and start, you know, really transitioning. So, you know, a carbon tax is is a piece of it, but on the time frame that we have, relying on, you know, market solutions alone is not going to get us where we need to be. And so I think, you know, keeping in mind considerations of equity, um, you know, our view would be that uh, the carbon tax is not going to get us where we need to go on its own. Mr. Cook, what's it going to mean for people? At the door, I meet tradespeople and they say, you're the person who wants to increase the price of my gasoline. I say, no, I'm the person that wants this. You don't need to buy gasoline anymore. You're not going to be worried about the gar carbon tax on your gas because your vehicle won't need gasoline anymore. That is the transition we have to go to. And the parliamentary budget officer um, assessed the Liberals' plan for carbon taxation and it's going to be nowhere near uh, um, adequate to, to meet our Paris targets. Even if it goes up to $240 a ton, there will still be people burning for the sake of getting around and making electricity. We have to go off of that and we have to have a plan to do it. All right, uh, time is short today and I, I appreciate you all uh, giving me your input in this important conversation as we continue to watch this story unfold. But thank you all, Ed Fast in British Columbia, uh, Sean Fraser in Nova Scotia, uh, Jean-Luc Cook here in the studio and Emily Tamman. Thank you all for your time, appreciate it. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Peter.